Welcome to my podcast. Today I want to talk to you about complex post-traumatic stress disorder and psychosomatic illness. It is something I used to equate with hypochondria, which is basically hysterical illness, which is where, in like a neurotic illness, a thought-up illness, an imagined illness. And it's, it's not. So a manifested illness that is as a result of the mind and body connection. Some could argue, in fact, I might even be in this camp, that really that includes all illness. Because I sort of feel like most, if not all, illness is due to some kind of a breakdown somewhere along the line. At least I know that's been true in my own life. I am generally, I've generally been very healthy. I've been a very healthy person. But the times when I have had illnesses, they've been pretty severe and directly linked to something going on in my life. As a child, I was basically healthy, but the one thing I had wrong with me is I had sore throats and laryngitis, like chronically for years, for a good chunk of my childhood, for most of my childhood, where my voice, or sometimes I didn't have a voice at all. And, you know, it would hurt to speak. My throat was sore constantly. And ironically, my mother was a nurse. And this was just a really neglected, neglected thing. But in retrospect, of course, I looked at that and I thought, how could that not be related to the fact that the whole time that was going on, there were all these secrets, things I wasn't telling myself, the truth I wasn't telling myself, let alone anybody else, about my, my life, about my family, about the truth of my situation. And it was a way to cope the way to cope. And of course, the big one, the big obvious one is that I was pressed for years. I couldn't figure out why I was so depressed because everything looked so perfect in my life. And then the universe was trying to get my attention with the depression. I kept going and saying, I don't know what's wrong with me. Give me some medication, you know, give me some medication because obviously nothing's wrong with me. My life is perfect and I'm still depressed. So we tried every kind of medication, you know, nothing really helped. We kind of got to some kind of cocktail that seemed to sort of take away the the worst edges of it. So that's what I was taking at the time when I had this heart attack. At 33 years old, I manifested a heart attack. They can speculate on the reason that there is a very rare disorder that has to do with fluctuations in estrogen levels, and I would have fit the profile for that to happen, but... I knew that really the reason that it happened had to, was related to this sadness. It was related to this sadness. And the reason that I especially knew that was that after the heart attack happened, my life just unraveled. As soon as I needed the people in my life and I couldn't hide my needs, I couldn't, I couldn't, it couldn't keep the needs from, I, you know, I had to go ahead and have needs. It was a mass exodus. My husband left, followed by my parents. And they just made up all these excuses and reasons to leave and, and did the smear campaign and the whole thing. And it was, you know, obviously devastating because here I almost died. And I'm really faced with the fact that my husband and my own parents and my own brother appear to wish that I had died. And to this day, it seems that's what they appear because I, that was basically the end of our relationship was when I survived. <laughs> And, you know, they started attacking me at that point. It went on for years of just them smear campaigning, attacking me and court battle and custody battles and all that stuff. And we were, you know, never okay again. You can see it happening with all kinds of things. With, uh, even my husband, who is a, you know, very, very balanced, very, you know, st- stable guy. I think that he, um, he, he needs a certain amount of downtime. He needs a certain amount of rest. And so he gets migraine headaches. And he, he thinks that they're as a result of not getting enough sleep. And I almost think it's the reverse. I think that he almost gets the headaches so that he has an excuse to go sleep. So he has, he has to, you know, he can't not. He has to go lay down because he can't do anything else because it hurts so bad. I have injuries in my back, but, and I have, I have residual pain in my back, but I, I feel, I believe that there is a connection between the CPTSD and that pain. And I'm, I'm going to, start exploring that a little bit. Definitely the most profound one, the most profound and obvious one in, in, that I had in my own life and that I see in, in my kids' lives 
is the mental illnesses with when it comes to depression. I was so sad. I was so, so depressed and really so confused about it. I had no idea why. And of course, now I can look at it and it just makes perfect sense. Of course, I was depressed. Of course, I was. But my sons, it's the same thing is true for them. They're, they, they have all kinds of reasons to be, to be depressed, to be anxious. And, and so my one son was self-medicating. And when he died, you know, I, I don't, I don't consider it, it the drugs that killed him. I consider that he died from CPTSD. He died because he was self-medicating his CPTSD. The, the, the really disturbing thing is, is that the trauma, prolonged trauma and in complex post-traumatic stress disorder is as a result of ongoing trauma, day in, day out trauma. So our bodies were built to have a system, an alarm system, so that when we were out in the jungles, fighting bears and tigers or whatever, that when there was, we saw a bear on the horizon, we would, our blood vessels would open up, our pupils would dilate, our heart would start pounding, and we would be able, our adrenaline would surge and all that, and we would be able to run faster, we'd be stronger, we'd be able to do things that we couldn't normally do in our, in our regular state. And this was, and, and we were designed to do that for short bursts. Well, the problem, what's the problem? The problem is what happens when that bear or that tiger comes home every night? There's a, there's a, a test called the ACEs test, which tests trauma triggers. It tests, it tests your, um, events in your life, things that go on in your life and asks, you know, how many trauma events have you had? And the amount of, they can, they can across like, they've done like 17,000 of these tests and have determined with complete accuracy that that there's there's predictable rates of you know you can you're you're said to be sure to die like 20 years earlier if you have like seven of these aces things versus none or even four of them or something would indicate these differences in in raised levels of cancer of different diseases, hepatitis and heart disease and all these things. And certainly suicide is on there. Suicide is a big one. And depression is a big one. And so those are very real diseases. You know, that is, there is absolutely everything that's very real about that. But there is a definite, it is definitely linked to the stress disorder and the ongoing day in, day out, prolonged effects of stress on bodies and this coming from childhood this is this is stemming from from early onset from childhood and you know i look at that and i think to myself that you know i just i think about my son and how i you know might have been focused on some of the wrong things you know i i wasn't treating him for post traumatic stress disorder we were treating him for a drug addiction you know, and we were going to start treating him for hepatitis, but those were symptoms, right? Those were the symptoms of the disorder of, of the, of the real root cause, you know, and I had addressed, you know, I had gotten him out of it trying to be around his dad, but he, and, and I believe, I believe that one of the biggest causes for a lot of people for depression is the cognitive dissonance because people do quite well. That even in, even when they've gone through really horrible events, torturous, you know, violence, terrible, even combat thing, combat veterans and violent crimes and really pretty horrible things, people actually recover quite well as long as they can say what happened, they can be validated for what happened. And they can get, you know, validation for that. Yeah, it was, it was wrong and that shouldn't have happened. That was a, you know, crisis and, and all that stuff. But the cognitive dissonance of not having the trauma admitted, validated, even witnessed, because a lot of times with, with emotional abuse, it's not witnessed. And if it is witnessed, sometimes the other witnesses, if there are one or two, there may be some other sort of Packed on, they may have a different position on how they're going to talk about it, or even even children in in, a, in the same family have a different experience of trauma. You know, my um, my brother and I 
for instance, he was definitely abused, definitely abused, but uh, it's not something we ever talked about. And he, he definitely jumped on board with scapegoating me and now basically ha says that we had an idyllic childhood and, and all that. So never, never validated that there was anything wrong with anything that was happening to me or that anything that anyone did, that there was anything wrong with any of that, which was pretty outrageous, pretty outrageous, um, abuse. But that, that can be that, that when I had my heart attack, it was definitely caused by the fact that I wasn't telling myself, oh, the way I was acting like my life looked perfect. Everyone was acting like it was perfect. I was acting like it was perfect. But there was something that I wasn't letting myself know. And that something became very clear when I had this heart attack and I needed help. And everyone just abandoned me. Then I went, aha, I see. <laughs> That's what the problem was. I was around, I was surrounded by all these people that didn't love me, that didn't love me. My life was a lie. I built a life on an illusion and they've been abusing me. This was abuse. They've been abusing me. They've been neglecting me and abusing me and they, you know, they didn't care about me. And strangely enough, as awful as my life got, I mean, it got really pretty chaotic, chaotic and it was really hard for several years because, you know, I just got brutalized in the divorce and all this stuff and was really just left penniless and disabled and, you know, completely isolated and, you know, it was really, really bad. And I had to build, rebuild a new life with, out of really nothing. And, but I did do that. But what's interesting was, is that the depression was gone. With all those things wrong with my life, the depression was gone because there was no longer any cognitive dissonance. Now I knew what was going on. I knew what had happened. I'd figured out about narcissistic abuse. I'd figured out I, my, my ex-husband at this point, he had a diagnosis that was given. He, we had gotten this diagnosis in 2003, but I had ignored it. And so I went back and dug it out and read it and started researching it. And, and all of a sudden I was putting two and two together. And now, now at least my life made sense. At least it made some sense. And, and there was no longer any, any lie there about it. But trauma, ongoing trauma is an emotional abuse, ongoing emotional abuse. So it doesn't, even, it doesn't have to be physical abuse. And the emotional abuse really is, really no one, ex, no one escapes from that. No one escapes emotional abuse. It's really the most, it's really the trickiest thing to navigate. And there's a book, this book right here, Heartbreak and Heart Disease. This book is actually about almost about exactly what happened to me, except for this is about manifesting heart disease, which I did not have. I had, I had something called spontaneous coronary artery dissection, so it happened all of a sudden. But you can, just having ongoing heartache and, and sadness and depression can actually cause you to have psychosomatic heart disease, can cause you to, to manifest heart disease. And I really absolutely, absolutely believe in the mind body connection. After my, after my near death experience, I absolutely do because I know that I willed myself to die. I know that I willed myself to live and I know that I willed myself to die again and I willed myself to live again. I, I totally did that. And so I, I completely believe in the mind body connection. And so now when things happen, like I've got some issues with my teeth, I had like a, I broke a bone, you know, different things like that. I, I definitely ask myself what's going on in my life. What's, you know, happening in my life. And I, and it has, a, it had the, the broken bone happened on my son's birthday. It has everything to do with my sadness and my grief over that. I, you know, I definitely have some issues and some anger and some CPTSD to really still sort through to deal with that. And my anger about it and all that, because, you know, not having any family support and all of that and feeling like they're responsible, but they'll never take any responsibility and all that. Those are things for me to work through and things that could very well make me sick. And so I want to work through them. I'm, I'm motivated to work through them because that is, you know, potentially some place that I, you know, could really be bad for my health. And so psychosomatic illness and complex post-traumatic stress disorder are both are very are related and they're important things to learn about. It comes from like dis abandoned feelings or not processing feelings, not wanting to go there. That doesn't work really very well, very long at all to try and not go into your feelings. 
trying to avoid feelings and avoidant, avoidant behaviors and denial and justifications and minimizing and all that. It doesn't work long term. And the longer you do it, the harder it is when you finally come around to finally having to face the facts. There is no way to the other side but through. And that's, that's what I, that's what I know for sure. And that's what I, with my son and his addiction and my, my other son, you know, they both had depression. They both have anxiety. It's related to this stuff. And, you know, the self, he was just, the self, the addiction was just self medication. And so I was hoping that he was going to be able to process going into, you know, really looking at what had happened in his life. And I really believe that was the way that he was going to get through it to the other side. And then the addiction was just a way to keep, continue to avoid going there. Because life hurt. It hurt a lot. And it was just, he didn't want to go into the pain. So he was avoiding the pain. And, but leaning into the pain and going through it and getting, getting to the other side is a way to heal the complex post-traumatic stress disorder, the only way that I know of. And it's also a way to avoid a multitude of psychosomatic illnesses, some of which are fatal, you know, long-term fatal. And you could cause yourself really a lifetime of poor health. And, and also, you know, it can be, it could be lesser things too. It could just be constant anxiety, panic attacks, and things like that, that are just make it, make it hard for you to have a productive life. And that can have all kinds of manifestations. It could be all kinds of reasons that you may have, may have developed those kinds of things as coping mechanisms in your childhood, you know? And there, you know, there's a multitude of ways that we learn to cope. Children are very adaptive. Like, for instance, maybe when you were a kid, you were really neglected and ignored and, but you had, you had asthma. And when you had an asthma flare up, you got your mom's attention, you know? So maybe asthma became a way of getting attention. And there's nothing wrong with that. We need attention. And you, you just did what, it would have just been a natural manifestation. But then eventually it gets fixed. It gets fixed. And because part of you and you tell yourself a different story about it. Systematic illness and PTSD, complex PTSD are related. And they're all related to emotional abuse in childhood. Treatments for dealing with them. I might do episodes on them in here. But ones that, that I have done myself that I, that I recommend, EMDR, which is eye movement. Eye movement desensitization reconditioning or something like that, um, which is you basically hold these palettes and you watch some lights and, and you, you think of the traumatic events and it kind of reprograms your, your brain when you're thinking about these traumatic events. There's the tapping, that, um, tapping therapy they might have heard about. And it also is when you think about the traumatic events and then you do this tapping on, on pressure points. And then there's a multitude of other, a multitude of other therapies and, and a toolbox of, things to try, you definitely want to try. If you are manifesting any kind of illnesses, and especially if you know you have complex stress disorder, then, you know, you know, you know what you need to do. You need to do, you need to work on some healing before you get really sick. So keep yourself well. All right. Thanks a lot, you guys. And I will uh, talk with you soon. Please write some comments and give me a thumbs up. Okay. Bye-bye.